absolutely just one of the most amazing songs ever written by Leonard Cohen. That is Hallelujah. And we're going to use it to look at the marriage of minor and major chords together before we start getting into playing in a minor key today on Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you for joining me. This is part four of a study on using chord progressions, how to get into them, how this melody relates to scale, how the scale can build chords, and how the chords then interact with each other. Now, if you're just joining us and you haven't listened to or seen the other episodes, I do recommend going back and looking at the last three episodes before this so that you can catch up with us, because I won't do too much recapping here, just a little bit to put everything in perspective. So we've been doing everything pretty much in the key of D major, and we're using these Roman numerals as our indications of the scale degrees. So we've got D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and C sharp, the seven notes of the D major scale. That's two sharps in the key of uh, D. And then we have our octave, which is the root note, an octave higher for a total of eight notes. But we have seven different notes, and we number them one through seven, and off of every single one of those notes, we can build a chord, which results in seven chords. Three major chords, which are happy and cheerful, three minor chords, which are kind of sad and serious, and one diminished chord, which is sort of a quizzical, kind of a strange little thing. And together, these seven chords in a key can be used to evoke a lot of emotions just across the broad spectrum of human nature. But we are in D, but you can use these scale degrees that we've been putting up on the screen for any key, as long as you just read that number and then assign the appropriate scale notes to it, you can do these chord uh, progressions in any key that you want to. And that's part of the beauty of learning the scale degrees because you're not stuck in one key. If you feel like transposing it or changing it to a different deal or modulating, you can certainly do that very, very easily just by focusing on the scale degrees. So let's take a look at what we've got in terms of chords in the key of D. We've got our one, four, five major chords, which are D, G, and A. We have our second, third, and sixth chords, which are going to be uh, E minor, F sharp minor, and B minor. And then we have our diminished chord built off the seventh scale degree. That's a C sharp diminished. We're not going to be using that in this song in particular or in our study just now. We'll handle that in another episode. So knowing what these chords are, let's take a look at how brilliant Hallelujah is in setting us up psychologically now, it's a song that most people are all about. Yeah, it's all about love. And it is, but it's not necessarily about love that survives or love that works. It's a love that fails is what's happening here. And what Cohen is doing is setting us up for disappointment because the title of the tune, Hallelujah, implies great victory and rejoicing. And he plays with our emotions and even tells us exactly how he's doing that in the first verse of the song, which is absolutely brilliant. So keep in mind that our one, four, five chords are D, G, and A. Then we have our minor chords. So we got E minor, F sharp minor, and B minor. So we start off, right, and we start going back and forth between the one chord and the sixth chord, D and B minor. It's a very nice back and forth, but it's got happy, kind of sad, happy, kind of sad, and then it gets into the thing. I heard there was a secret chord, yes, that David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't, oh, there's a nice happy G major chord, okay, it was starting to sound kind of sad there for a second, but you don't really care for music. There's the five chord, very happy. Do we are. And then he begins to explain what he's doing. Well, it goes like this. The fourth, there's the four chord. The fifth, there's the five chord. The minor fall. Now, we know it's a minor chord, but what does he mean by fall? Because we're actually going up in pitch. Well, that's just the way I'm playing it. I very much could do it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and pitch-wise take it down. But that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the major chords, the fourth and the fifth, have begun to ascend us, 
to make us feel like we're rising and awesome. And then that B minor, that minor six kicks in. Something's not quite right with this ascension. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall. Our spirits fall again. But then he goes back to the four chord. The major lift. Oh, there it is. We're okay. We're going to be okay. Then he goes to the five chord. The baffled king. Yes, we keep reaching higher and higher towards the sky. Composing. Now here's a borrowed chord. He plays F sharp major. Now we use F sharp minor if we're playing diatonically, but he uses this because it's another major chord and he's done psyching you out, kinda. He wants you to feel like we're gonna rise to a very brilliant chorus of hallelujah. Just pretend you've never heard this song before and you can see what's going on. Lift you up, lift you up, tear you down a little bit. Lift you up, lift you up, and then this F sharp major, which sounds really unusual, and we really can't play an F sharp major tuned in DAD on the mountain dulcimer, so I'm playing a F sharp five, which omits the minor third. But still, the feeling is there. We're rising up even higher. We've done three major chords in a row, the four, the five, and now the major third. And we're about to explode here. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. The baffled king composing. It's got to go higher and triumphant. And he brings you back down to the minor six and says the word that we feel is going to be full of rejoicing and trumpets and angels. Hallelujah. Let's do that. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. That's kind of sad. Gosh, what just happened? And then when we go to the chorus, it's back and forth again between our happy root chord D and our sad minor six B minor using just the words hallelujah. And that sets us up for the failure of this love story. Hallelujah, sorry, hallelujah. G, sorry, we're doing the four chord to the minor six. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's kind of sad. Hallelujah, and then hallelujah to the one who five chord. Mm, yeah, down to the one, back to the five, and then we begin into our next verse. It is a really, really clever, clever bit of songwriting, and I love how he's actually describing the scale degrees and how you can get people to feel a certain way and then do something else with a minor chord, then lift with a major, then take down with a minor. It shows the power and the emotion involved using the chords of the diatonic scale. And you can, if you so desire, go outside of the scale by using borrowed chords and also using accidentals, notes that are not in the scale, but you can use to your heart's content. All of these rules of the, of the key were made to be broken, but we're trying to keep things simple to start off with, and we will definitely get into those types of things later in our series. So that, I just wanted to focus on that because it really is just a great, great underlying psychology and a method of combining these chords to help tell your story, your bittersweet love story. And that's how we should be looking at these chords. As we're writing something, think about the story we want to tell and then choose appropriate chords. And if your story is very complex, you may very well find yourself going outside of the key to find the correct resources. All right, so we've been focusing now on playing in a major key. Major key has both major chords, minor chords, and also a diminished chord. And you can use either all major chords, you can use all minor chords if you want to. But the whole idea here is that these chords all are assigned different sort of superpowers. Some are more powerful than others, and others are not as powerful as the rest. And so it's how you line those chords up and how you bounce back and forth between them that will really, really make a song work for you. So once again, we've got our chords built off the first, fourth, fifth notes of the scale are major, built off the second, third, and sixth notes of the scale are minor, built off the seventh note of the scale is a diminished chord, and that is your major key, your major scale. Now, 
we're going to flip this around and we are going to play in a minor key now. So all that stuff that's on the screen, we're going to change it around just a little bit. Now last week we talked about the relative minor, which is a minor key that has the exact same key signature as a major key, and they share the exact same notes. It starts on the sixth note of the major scale. So in the case of D major, our relative minor key will be B minor. Remember that little thing I showed you last week? If you start from the sixth note and just play like you were playing through the notes of the D major scale, but starting with B, you're going to end up with a minor scale, the natural minor, in fact. Here's our two octave D major scale. Now I'll go to the sixth note, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now with B, I'm gonna start those seven notes of the D major scale. I'm gonna start on the sixth note instead of starting with the first note and listen to the quality of this scale. There is your B minor scale. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to simply change into the key of B minor and some things are going to change with our scale degrees. We're still going to number them one through seven, but we're going to have different things happening. Let me go ahead and put that up on the screen here. So you see we have the B minor scale, which is B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. So two sharps again, F sharp and C sharp, just like D major. These are the exact same seven notes that are in D major, but we're starting with B instead of starting with D. Okay, now, the next thing you'll notice is that we do have our Roman numerals numbered one through seven underneath the notes. However, you'll notice that one, four, and five are no longer uppercase, indicating that they're major chords. One, four, and five are now lowercase, indicating that they are minor chords. Now, that is the one big similarity as far as the numbers are concerned. But take a look at what happens with two, three, and six. Two is now your diminished chord. So it doesn't automatically flip over and become a major chord. Now it is the diminished chord. And then take a look at what happens with three and six. Those are now major chords. So that is a flip from where it was before. And then look at your seven. That's what, that was a diminished chord. Now it is simply a major chord. So. This is the scale degree pattern if you're playing in a minor key. It might be a little weird to look at to start with, but it'll make a lot of sense here in a little bit. One thing I want you to notice, however, is that notice that the resulting chords that are beneath the scale degrees, they're exactly the same chords that we play in D major. Exactly the same chords. B minor, C sharp diminished, D, E minor, F sharp minor, G and A. So they are truly related these two keys, D and B minor. Now we talked about when we're playing in a major key, how certain chords are stronger than others and how they like to go and move along with other chords, like the one to five, five to one, very, very powerful resolution. Um, the four chord, sort of a disruptor, but very much usually included in the movement of the one before the five and so forth. Well. You'll be happy to know that the very, very same thing applies here. The one, four, five, but they're all minor chords, have a very powerful pull, conflict, and resolution between them. And so that remains the same. Some of the other chords, however, have some different qualities. And we're going to keep this very simple and stay within the natural minor key. But I'll expose what a lot of songwriters do when they want to make things interesting. With this dark tonality, things get complex harmonically very quick. And things can be a little, I don't know, downtrodden, very, very low key when we're playing in a minor key this way. But there are a lot of ways to work the minor and the major in together. But you'll see that it does sound very, very different once we start moving some of these chords around. So let's take a look at what we can do here and the power of using a minor key when you're playing music. Let's do a one, four, bop, bopping back and forth between one and four. It's gonna be B minor and E minor. Very 
dark, right? I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. Well, Bob Marley and the Wailers, and if you've heard that song, you know that it does end up going to some major chords, but it comes right out of the box as a very dark minor, and well, gosh, you're talking about murder for crying out loud. Minor chords fit murder really well, among other things, and so that's why that really works so well. Let's look at one chord, five chord. It's gonna be B minor to F sharp minor. Now five and one is still a very, very powerful resolution here. It's not as strong as the one five that you find in a major key, but it still works and these two can bounce back and forth very nicely. That's me in the corner. That's me in the spotlight, losing my religion. Trying to keep up you, and I don't know if I can do it. Oh no, I said too much. Well, REM, very, very dark, and as we know, that song does eventually get some major chords in there as well, but I'm really focusing on the minor chords and how they work, bouncing off each other, especially when we're using a minor chord as the root to launch us off, in this case, B minor. How about, oh, let's see, let's do a one, five, four, one. Let's get all of those one, four, five chords in there together. So we're talking about um, B minor, F sharp minor, and E minor. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone, and she's gone too long. Anytime she goes away. Some Bill Withers, man. Now, how depressing is that? You know, ain't no sunshine when she's gone. That's a perfect, perfect place to drop a whole bunch of minor chords, because major chords are just way too darn happy for something about that. That's the power of the minor chords. That's the power of the minor key and how it works. Really, really cool stuff. How about um, including some of these major chords now? Because we do have them and they are going to be very, very helpful to us. Our major chords are D, G, and A once again. But now D is the three chord, G, is the sixth chord, A is the seven chord. So the numbers are different, but the chords and the ingredients in those chords are the same. So let's take a look at what we've got here. Let's start off with G and go down to B minor. Ah, oh, look at all the lonely people. Eleanor Rigby. Picks up the rice in a church where a wedding has been Lives in a dream, waits by the window Wearing a face that she keeps in a jar by the door Who is it for? All the lonely people Where do they all come from? All the lonely people Where do they all belong? Brilliant stuff from the Beatles, Eleanor Rigby in a minor key once again. And so it's nice because you've got another depressing story of this lonely, lonely woman. But then you've got these elements of sunshine that come up with the major chord inclusion. But no doubt about it, it kicks off minor. Well, except with the, uh, the, the, the recorded version of this, it actually starts off with a major. It starts off with that G major first, well, in the key of D. And then, it hangs out in the minor a lot, but that major release gives us a chance to come up for air and breathe a bit with all of the darkness that's going on with that tune. Again, brilliant, brilliant stuff from the Beatles. Going back and being more classic now, let's go way back now to a traditional tune. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll go 1-4, uh, B minor, E minor. 
I am a poor wayfaring stranger while traveling through this world of woe. It's a world of woe. Yeah, that's a minor subject, isn't it? There is no sickness, toil, and danger in this bright world to which I go. Now here's the cool thing about this tune because it starts off like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired of earth. I want to go to this beautiful, beautiful place. And so what happens? We want that emotional lift and that is where the major chords come in. And so uh, we're going to go uh, to the G, the sixth chord, and bounce back and forth between that and D, which is the three chord. So um, I'm going there to see my father. I'm going there no more to. And then we need a poignant kind of a feeling at the end of that. And so we're going to go to our minor five, the F sharp minor. No more to roam. I'm only go wing over Jordan. I'm only go wing over home. I love that rise though. <laughs> Now, the interesting thing about playing in a minor key is that oftentimes you're going to be bringing in other types of chords, and I'll explain this in a second. Sometimes you will play both instances of a chord, a root position chord or a root chord. So in this case, I was playing an F sharp 5 to be sort of ambiguous, since with this tuning we can't actually play F sharp major. But F sharp major is what the song would call for, and that would actually be a major five, not a minor five. But it also works if you want to not take it so high with that F sharp minor. I'm going there to see my Savior. He said he'd meet me when I come. That's still kind of sad though, you know. So F sharp major is more triumphant. And again, it depends on the subject matter of the material that you're working with. That is a great example right there of how to use either or. One final one I'll show you, and this is probably one of the ones, when you think about blues music, you think about major keys most of the time, but minor blues has got a particular power to it, and one of the most famous, if not the most famous minor blues is The Thrill Is Gone by B.B. King. And so we're talking about one, four, and five chords, but there are some changes and alterations made here. We start off with B minor if we're in the key of D, or a key of B minor. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone away. Then to the minor four, E minor. The thrill is gone. The thrill is gone away. Back to B minor, the one. Then we rise to a major six, G major. You know you've done me wrong, baby. And now we call for a major five, which will be F sharp major. And you'll be sorry someday. And at that point, it breaks through the misery of this minor blues. And that ray of sunshine is like the one thread of hope that BB has got that he may, you know, be upset. But there's hope that at least his woman's going to pay for it, right? Again, but see, what we're doing here specifically is a, um, an alteration of the chord. And you can do that. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked that. We've got the minor scale. And that's all we've talked about so far is what we call the minor scale or a minor key. We also call it the natural minor because it's naturally occurring. But there are two other minor scales you should be thinking about. There is the harmonic minor and the melodic minor. There's also the ascending melodic minor. And there's, there's th these different variations of minors. And what happens is, and this is going to be something we focus on later in our series, is instead of using the chart 
that we've got for the natural minor, we're actually going to use the chart based on the notes of the two other minor scales, melodic and harmonic. And that's going to generate some different combinations and give us different chords. And with those different chords, we're going to have a whole new series, a palette of harmonic possibilities. Does it sound complex? Yes, it does. And that's why we're not going to get into it right now. But we are going to get into it later in the session. And that explains what's going on with that last piece that sometimes, yes, you want to bring in something that's different to give us some more harmonic possibilities. And we'll be looking at that. I'm not sure what week it'll be. I'll probably be in Winfield when it happens. But it will be happening very, very soon. So I hope you're enjoying this. I've been getting lots of emails from you guys. And um, you're very, very excited about this. And you're learning a lot from it. Thank you very much for writing. And let me know maybe what you'd like to see discussed in the coming weeks. This will be going all the way through the end of August and all the way through the end of September. We're spending a good solid two months just looking at chord progressions. So send me your questions, bingfutch at yahoo.com. I also want to thank all of my patrons on Patreon who have been egging me on to do something like this for a while. Thank you guys so much. I love you very, very, very deeply. And if you want to find out about Patreon, go to patreon.com slash bingfutch and then scroll down and check out the open house section where you can download a lot of this stuff that I have been doing over the past six, now going on seven years. That's it for this week. Next week, where are we going? I don't know yet, but it's going to be fun. I can guarantee you that. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.